The Boston Bruins have a very big situation this season where they're going to need their younger players, such as Fabian Lysel, to really step up. And Fabian Lysel, this could be his final chance with the Boston Bruins if this does not work out. Let me be talking about what the possibilities of that are, as well as the goalie situation that we currently have, and how this very good problem will sort itself out in this upcoming season. We have a lot of news here to talk about in this video. Before we get into it, though, we know some 75% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all of your Boston Bruins news, if you're in the right spot, hit the sub button, join me here on this channel. We're still waiting for that Jeremy Swayman contract, and that is the big thing that you guys will not want to miss. So make sure to hit that sub button so you get the news as it happens. But like I said, let's get into our first topic here of this video, which is going to be discussing Fabian Lysel. Is this season the make it or break it season for him? We know Lysel's been kind of waiting for that spot to get to the NHL, and this is the year to do it. We have an open right wing slot, many, many opportunities where we can go get a free agent, we can do many things internally, but this is going to be a battle between Georgi Markulov and Fabian Lysel. Lysel being the more notable of the two by name recognition and everything. And we're expecting a lot from him this season. But if this doesn't end up working out, if this whole situation with Fabian Lysel continues to be a very mediocre situation, this is going to be a real big issue that the Bruins will have to face sooner rather than later. We know that Fabian Lysel still very, very young, hasn't been given every opportunity, but He's going to have that chance in this upcoming season, and here's really a big part of what we can expect from him. Lysel has a golden opportunity to make the Bruins roster this upcoming season. Finally, after losing Jake DeBrusque and Denton Heinen to Vancouver in free agency and failing to sign a replacement, there are spots in the Bruins lineup to fight for. The second right-wing spot is the most notable, and Lysel is a candidate for it. And right now, in my opinion, I would say he's the number one. You know, number one, number two is Markulov. Other than that, we really don't know what else the Bruins are going to do in those situations because we have Jeremy Swayman still to be signed. That's one thing that's going to take up a lot of cap. So the Bruins are going to want to make this as cheap as possible and go internally in this situation. We know Lysel, still a very good player. That is not the concern. We know he can be an elite talent. It's a matter of if he will become that elite talent that we all expect him to be. Last season with Providence, 50 points in 56 games, 15 goals, 35 assists. 54 games played in the previous season with 37 points, and he's only getting better. The big point of concern with Fabian Lysel is that he's really not a big player. He's quite small, don't have much weight on him, 5'11", so he has that mediocre height, but he still is not as strong as we would like to see him on his feet. And that's the big point of concern, as I mentioned, that the NHL is a much different game. That's one thing that there's no debating, that's one thing that is evident, and that's one thing that he needs to work on is just his size, his muscle mass, everything along the lines of that. And then we go from there. And that's what we see right now. We know he's putting on muscle in the offseason. We know he's working for that. But with his size being 5'11, 181, and still only 21 years old, there's still lots of time. But really, this could be this. This is it. This could be the this is it. Now he's in the NHL. Now he's here. Now he's a big part of this team. Or it could be a major setback for him, especially where. The Bruins right now need to succeed. That's that's their point. That's what they're trying to do, especially with the additions they've made. They're trying to get better, and they're not going full out with the prospects, as we know the Bruins aren't that kind of team. So this really could be this make it or break it for Fabian Lysel. Let me know what you think. I believe in him. I, I really can't wait to see the start of the season, if he makes it, how he'll play in that time, and everything kind of leading up to that situation that we're going to see uh, regarding him. It's going to be a, a nice battle to see, but either way, they're in good hands with Markulov and Lysel, and really, this is going to be the final answer that we're really hoping for to figure this position out. So, like I said, let me know what you think about this one. It's quite an interesting thought thought, uh, thought process to go behind, but we have lots of time yet before the, before the season kicks in. But let's get into our second topic here of this video, which is we have a pretty big goaltending battle on our hands. We know that Jeremy Swayman is going to be this number one. We know he is the guy right now. He's the guy that we're waiting to see, waiting for this contract to take over this team and be that number one after splitting the net with Linus Olmark for a few seasons now. But what's for number two? Who's going to be number two by the start of the season? Who's going to be the number two by the end of the season? That's one thing the Bruins are going to have to figure out throughout the run of this year uh, coming up. And what's going to happen with a few of these goalies? Because the Bruins still 
are a top team in the NHL for the list of goaltenders that are in the system. We know because Jonas acquired Jonas Corposalo from the Ottawa Senators in that deal, but even if he is not going to be here by the end of the season, still have Brandon Bussey and Mikey DiPietro, two very good goalies who have been continuing to prove themselves from the past few seasons up until this very point in their careers. And still, a lot of upcoming things. And I'm going to pull up what we have and who we have in the system kind of go over it. So we know that Jeremy Swayman, obviously the number one. I feel like I didn't really need to feature him in here because there's no chance he's losing that number one unless some absolutely crazy, absurd trade happens where they can't get a deal done for the RFA rights. But let's not even think about that. I don't want to, I don't want to imagine it. But as you can see, Yos Corpusalo, I think it's safe to assume that we can say he'll be the number two beginning of the season. Trying to get him better, trying to develop him in the back to what he was in his prime. And that, I think, can, is doable. We know the Boston Bruins' goaltending system works out for goalies. They get them, I wouldn't say better, because they're still very good goalies, the best in the world, because they're in the situation they are. But some people may have a down year, exactly what Corpus Allo had last season. And the Boston Bruins is a place you want to go to change your career around like that. And this is a perfect opportunity for Corpus Allo. Now, will he be this second goalie by the end of the season? It's very, very... Uh, I'll say on the table. We know that's Bussy and, and um, Mikey DiPietro, two goalies waiting to come up, two goalies who have been driving and, and, and just really making their push to the NHL. So my, I, I theorized here before, Jonas Corpusalo could be a piece for a trade if he ends up having some very good stats this year in a, I would say, mediocre uh, amount of games. This could be a great trade candidate with retained salary to a team that's looking for that goalie, whether it be from injury, whether it be from a goalie that's not playing well. There's plenty of opportunities like that come the trade deadline. So if the Bruins are using this piece as a trade opportunity down the road, that will work out. Having one of these two goalies that will pull up once again in either Brandon Bussey or Mikey DiPietro make this roster. And I'm very excited to see what happens in this one. I'm expecting a lot of back and forths between Corpus Allo, Bussey, Mikey Di DiPietro. You're going to see a lot of news of all these guys and they're going to be fighting for a job, and I'm very excited to see how it works out. I'm excited to see how good Corpus Allo gets. Hopefully that's the case, but if he doesn't play bad, we still have many options in the AHL. So I want to know what you guys think, or who you guys think, will be the number two by the end of the season. I might go a bit of a bold one. Probably not too as bold as it could be, but I'm going to say it's going to be Brandon Bussey by the end of the year. Although... I would not be surprised if it was Mikey DiPietro either. So, like I said, let me know what you think on the, the number two by the end of the season. I think we have the number one or the number two locked up at the beginning, but by the end. So, let's head on to our final topic here of this video. And this is a bit of a different one. I'm going to cover the Bruins events that they have planned for this season in-house, at home. For any of you guys who are looking to go to a game this year, um, and you know, you're looking to go on an event night. And I'm going to pull these up here, just kind of have a look through them. Pause the video if you wish to... You're, you're, if you're planning on going and you want to try and get a catch a special night, we have a great list here. I'm not going to go over them right now, but you can see lots and lots and lots of opportunities here to go see any of the special ones and a lot of great causes here. So I'm very happy to see the Bru Bruins continuing this. Didn't expect any different, but just wanted to pull this up for you guys who are planning on going to games this year. Um, if you're looking for one on any kind of any of these dates, but that's all I got here in this video. If you did enjoy it, give it a like, hit the sub button as well. Uh, we're, we're, absolutely blowing this channel up and i do appreciate every single one of you guys it means the world to me and uh you know i can always say thank you so much but if i could say infinite times i would but that's all i got like i said i'm signing out thank you for watching hope you have a great day see you later